can you get to some of those questions? You're yes. gonna you're gonna ask the question, Chris, you know, Wilvina, uh, you know, Jesse, if she's still here, Caitlin can try to answer them as best we can. Yep. We can't we can't have everybody just jumping in from all over the place. So we're still gonna have to establish some kind of control. But if you have a useful comment, put it in the chat. And if we're able to, that answers a question that we don't know the answer to, then we can hopefully unmute you. So Kelly, you're free to answer questions in this too. Any of our co-hosts, that would include Steve and Jay. And we'll be, I'm gonna read the list. Me, Hal, Caitlin, Danny, Jay, Jess K, Kelly, Chris R, Steve, and Wolvina, because we are the ones that have the ability to unmute ourselves. All right, Hal, take it away. Okay, well, I'm just gonna go over the list real quick, and what I'll do is I'll post the question while you guys are answering that particular question. I'll go look for the next one, because about 80 or 90% of the questions that were actually answered in the chat, questions in the chat were answered in the presentation. So we'll hope that everybody will uh, go over the uh, webinar afterwards and find their answer. But I'm gonna try and pick the ones that I think were like, may not have been hit, had hit on very well. Um, one of the questions was uh, about the length of time that we're finding, what are the, what's the best length of time for our meetings? 60 minute meetings, 90 minute meetings and so forth. Yeah, I, I, can, I can answer that. Um, I think what I think if we're doing regularly, regularly scheduled meetings, I, I think anything over an hour and a half is probably too long. Uh, and, and the fact is that there's an awful lot of um, other meetings available. Uh, I think that's a strain on the trusted servants to try and keep a meeting in order for, for anything more than an hour and a half. That's just my thoughts on it. I mean, most of our meetings are either 60 or 90 minutes at Hignam. Okay, the, uh, ne the next one that we sort of touched on, but I think it's probably we need to expand on it a little bit here is, can the host delete inappropriate files or chat messages? Um, how do we handle inappropriate things going on in the chat? You cannot, you cannot delete um, text that's put into the chat box on Blue Jeans, and we answered that question in our conversation or on Zoom either. I mean, the files I'm assuming you guys can delete because you can put them there. You know, we can't put files on Blue Jeans. Once it's posted in chat, it's there. Everyone can access it. So if, if you're afraid of what's going to be posted in it, I would strongly advise turning file sharing off for regular meetings. And you got to monitor the chat. People Thank are inappropriate. You. I'm glad to know that for Zoom. Hmm. Okay, next one. These are, these would be the these, the next two or three are going to be like rapid fire ones. Uh, does the co-host need to have a paid account as well? No. Okay, thank you. Does the breakout room do breakout rooms require a more expensive plan? Nope. Not on. Not to on enable. Right. It's the same with Zoom. With whatever your account is, you just with Zoom you have to enable the setting, turn it on if you want to use them. One thing with the, the, the co-host function, uh, the user that you're making co-host has to have an active Zoom account. Even if it's a free account, that's fine. We ran into where we had a member coming for years and years and years, and he was just logging in through the web interface and not actually logging into Zoom. And when they tried to make him co-host, it said, this isn't a Zoom, this is not a Zoom user. Hey, do, do breakout rooms require more a more expensive plan? No. Okay. How many individual room IDs can you set up on one Zoom license? Uh, at the same time or at different times? They didn't specify. So you, we would need the clar clarification on that. On the blue on the blue jeans, we could we we could do a meeting. You could do twenty four meetings. You just can't get into trying to do two meetings at the same time on the same license. Right, it's, okay. it's the same with Zoom. So if, if you wanted two meetings at the same time, I'm sure Blue Jeans would be similar that you'd have to create like a breakout room to host two separate meetings. Yep. Yeah. Okay, if we start a temporary meeting, I would assume they're talking about a temporary NA meeting like they assume that their home group is gonna come back face to face again. That's what I'm assuming they meant. Uh, should they send that information to the virtualna.org website? 
I wanted to make a statement about that for, for virtual NA. If you want to submit your meetings, the things that we're looking for, whether you're creating a permanent meeting or a temporary meeting, and we will list temporary meetings. The other thing that we want to know critical is your format and whether it's a video meeting or, or a no video meeting so we can post that because that's going to become stressed. I mean, it's already up there. If you go look at some of the meetings now, it's already been put into play. We, we did That was done last night to try to stop people from turning their videos on when they walk into non-video meetings. Look at the format. It's right there. No video in this meeting. So that's, I mean, that's whatever you would submit to your region or your area or the world to get your meetings listed is basically what you need for virtual. Send it by email at this point, and we'll try to get it done within 48 to 72 hours. We're not a big organization, guys, meeting people. So please be patient. And if we do, if you're not seeing it, just send another email because we're looking at the emails all the time. Thank you. Thank uh, you. And, okay. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll just add to that a little bit. So uh, it is it is perfectly okay if you have a home group, let's say air group in Huntsville, Alabama, and we have 50 home group members that attend. It is perfectly okay if everybody knows how to get a hold and talk to each other to create your Zoom meeting and just share it amongst yourself, not being that you're exclusive and, and not including everybody else, but that is a way that a small meeting doesn't get overwhelmed with maybe 100 or 150 participants uh, and not knowing how to do that. So you do have the option to create a Zoom meeting on a temporary basis and not share that with virtualna.org. You don't have to. Uh, you, and, and then that way you just share it uh, with people that you know, and then that way you're in a meeting with people you know. Uh, but on the other hand, then you know you can talk about the philosophies, well, all meetings are open and accessible to all ethics, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then when it, you know, I'll shut up there. Well, okay. No, it, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, here's something, here's something to consider, guys, when we think about our autonomy and what kind of spaces we want to create. There are six points to an NA meeting and the, in a, a guide to local services and also the group booklet. And so when you start thinking about, is it, you know, is it a real NA meeting because not anybody can come or not? Well, that's one thing, but here's something else to consider. Most times groups that don't meet all six points aren't on an official NA meeting schedule, which, so, you know, you can create a space and do an NA like meeting whenever you want. But if you want to be on some of these local meeting lists, then you need to think about what that looks like if for inclusivity and exclusivity. That's just something to consider. Jay, have you all asked anybody questions about that when they're asking to be? Oh, absolutely. We want to know if they follow this. I, I mean, it goes to if you don't follow the steps and traditions, if you don't give us enough information, it's being sent back to you asking if you follow the guidelines for a meeting and whether you I mean, we've put some meetings up today as temporary because they have the information and we've asked them to send back. Are you using video or no video? I mean, Something to think about before you submit it to us is the fact that do you want to be unindated? Give yourself a couple of weeks. And if you want to put it up after a couple of weeks in some dry runs or some wet runs with smaller people, because ask Shane, ask anybody that we put meetings up for, as soon as you get the meetings there, you have 400 people in the room, right, Shane? And if you don't understand how to mute all and you don't have an established <laughs> protocol, that's, there's, there's an established protocol that we are all used to in chairing a meeting. And we wouldn't, we wouldn't sit in a meeting where everybody was talking on their phone to each other at the same time. So we should not sit in an online or a virtual meeting on the phone and have to listen to people having side conversations and all this crap either. You know, it's, 
let's establish, you know, uh, an atmosphere of recovery and let's maintain that so that we have predictability. That's uh, something that Kelly and I and Chris have been talking about is, is that we skip these steps in our head because we're so used to uh, what these underlying, like what our preferences really are. And so that's why I was trying to reference earlier, what is it that I like about meetings that I attend in person? You know, is it I get there, it's always meeting, same time, same place. You know, when I get there, I understand how the meeting is going to be run. I understand that I'm, I'm going to feel safe in that meeting, that if something disruptive happens in that meeting, that the established and experienced members are going to take measures to protect me so that I want to come back. You know, like we can control people's voices. We can't control the chat, right? So if somebody does something disruptive in the chat, all we can do is remove them but that is the same as being in a face-to-face -face meeting and somebody running in the room and jerking out their genitals or something. I mean, we can't stop that in a regular meeting. We can only react to it. And so that's why, you know, Kelly was speaking to some of these kind of philosophical things is that we actually have more control over the space and atmosphere of recovery in a virtual meeting than we do in our real meetings. We just need to, be realistic about that when we're when we're having these discussions, you know. Okay, we're, we're almost can at I, the can end I, of can the... I could I just quickly jump in to add something that Jay said? I mean, one of the things, sure. one of the one of the criteria that we're really kind of keen about in terms of the virtual NA website is is if you're setting up a, a, an account to to run one of these meetings, please don't use your own personal account. Um, call them something different and uh, make sure that they are clearly marked as a meeting and um, and so on. Um, I just wanted to add that. That's really important. Oh, you mean like in the invite? So it's like, you know, uh, welcome, you know welcome Terrence, to, Terrence welcome Dairy to is inviting you to the such and such meeting, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we've had a couple of people submit sort of meeting, meeting, up, uh, uh, meeting details, and, but we, we check on the site and it's a personal, it's someone's personal Zoom account or whatever it might be, um, and we're just uh, and we're really not keen to do that. I mean, it's like it says in, in in the group booklet. Actually, having meetings in people's own homes is like discouraged for for obvious reasons, and it's the same thing. So that's just something people need to be aware of. Okay, hey, ready? Here we go. Quickie, easy ones. This is the one we go over in every meeting. But if the people that are starting the groups and running the meetings don't know the answer to this question, they won't be able to give it to the members that are attending. And that is, how do you change your name while using the cell phone? And go over how you change it while using the computer too, so it doesn't say iPhone is sharing now. As a, I'm assuming you're talking about dial-in only. So yes. dial-in only. We you before every meeting starts. We usually ask, "Hey, iPhone, what do you want to change the name to?" And if you're calling in, you won't have that ability. So when we ask you verbally, we would like a response back, and we can change it for you. If you have a yeah. smartphone, you can change it if you're connected like that. But if it's um, dialing only, we have to do it for you. On the blue jeans, we don't. We can't control other people's names. You can control your own name on the list, and on the phones. You just go to settings and put whatever name you want in. If your phone is iPhone, that's what it's going to come up as. But there are settings that you can change. And, and once they're changed, they don't change every other time. Or every time you log in, it's there. If you're going to be chairing a new meeting uh, for the first time in either the Blue Jeans or the Zoom software, probably a good idea for you and one other person or whatever to get together and make believe it's a meeting. And oh no! We do that somebody's all, name for them and so forth. We do that all the time when we're training people. We have fake meetings all the time. Exactly. Yeah, I got a question. So you're saying if someone joins your Blue Jeans meeting, that as a the moderator, because that's the term on Blue Jeans is moderator instead of host, that you don't have the ability to change the text of their name as the host. Nope. Well, yeah, it's so that's the difference in Zoom. So if somebody right. shows up and say they have like a super hood nickname. <laughs> it's like it's like you know bad bitch 55 or something you know on on zoom as a host we can change that but on blue jeans we can't so that's a we would, we would be talking to them very quickly yeah. yeah i mean you can i'm just saying that uh that's something when we talk about being realistic about how we control the atmosphere of recovery that's just another variable that you 
need to keep in mind is that you know we're we're trying to remove as many variables as possible to to keep that atmosphere so jay is saying he would address that personally with them and say hey you need to change that or you got to roll you know in, in zoom we can just change it on our own as hosts and co-hosts we can just type over it a lot of times we have a couple of people at the beginning of the meeting if somebody has their full name in there and even though we don't have to do this we try to do this because people don't have the skill set yet is we'll go in and erase everything but their last initial and we'll rename them on our own. And, you know, sometimes we tell them, sometimes we don't. Every now and then we turn someone's video off because there's something that, and they're not responding in the chat because the chats are just crazy. And, and they say, hey, why can't I see myself? And I send them a message that says, because you don't have a shirt on or because you just were, you just had paraphernalia out and we can't allow people to see that, you know, or twisting one up at when you're done sharing. So. Yeah. And walking out the door to light it and right. you're going to get your video off. Please keep coming back because we love you. <laughs> and that <laughs> happened last off. night. Yeah. And we, we turned yeah. the video off and we said, yep. you know, Hey, just, just keep sharing. It's okay. Keep coming, keep sharing. We can't allow, but we have to take control of that to maintain the atmosphere. Okay, the, the, I'm going to turn the question, next question around. We're getting to the end here. It's not a lot. We're, I'm going to turn the next question around. Um, we need to explain why we use video rather than listen to why it's bad. What's the positive? Why, why do we want to use video in an NA meeting on, on a platform like this or, or anywhere else? What's the Go positive ahead, part of it? Okay, I'll answer this because this is, uh, this is a many, 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 many year long debate. Uh, and something that I've not dragged into this crisis. Uh, but as we get through the other side of this crisis, you will begin to see very strong philosophical boundaries of what he, how people feel about video or no video. And so we've clearly heard on one side of the issue, and I've avoided really putting mine out there because I don't want this to become a debate. So I will just simply say this. If you feel comfortable being in a room where you see people and people see you, then support that and continue to go to meetings that support that. Uh, if you are uncomfortable, then there are options for you to go where that is not supported and you will feel comfortable and safe in those environments. And so there, the person who asked the question, you can see my name uh, and you can uh, uh, find me in uh, on Facebook. Uh, I'll break my anonymity because uh, my security clearance has already identified me as an addict in recovery and so I won't lose my security clearance. So Kelly Sweeten, as in Sweeten Low Sugar, S-W-E-E-T-E-N. You can find me on Facebook. Uh, send me a message and, you know, uh, individually I can go in and, and just provide my philosophy and my perspective on video. It's kind of uh, 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 different than those that have been shared here, uh, but I'm not going, I really don't want to drag uh, this down like a rock uh, over that debate. If you like it, support it. Uh, and, and, and participate it. If you're uncomfortable with it, then there are other meeting options that will not have that environment and, and you will feel just as safe and comfortable in those environments. Was that okay? No, that's, yeah. that's close you, enough. I'm, I'm going to yeah. speak on some general things about that real quick. I'm jump it's got nothing it. to do with, you know, like approval or disapproval. And as, as a person who does a lot of outreach with people all over the world, um, we are, we kind of have this, this state dependent learning of the, the road most traveled and what we're used to as individuals. And so, you know, there are many people that are a certain age. Most of the people, you know, that are used to using the telephone, most of their life prefer video, not no video meetings because they are so used to communicating their brains work in a manner of, you know, they receive input you know, from the sound 
and they paint a picture in their brain and that's they're used to that and that's that's what they prefer and then we have a younger generation that uh is used to the the visual stimulation and that's what they feel like they need for connection that they respond emotionally that way you know it's it's the we are products of our environment and then there are some of us that are completely fucked like us gen x guys people because we're right in the middle you know we understand eight track tape cd <laughs> mp3 you know all that and so you know we attend both you know i attend both it's it's difficult if you've never tried it i would encourage you to go to a non-video meeting and sit and it's like reading a book instead of watching a movie okay it really is and you will find out what you prefer and that's why we offer as a community we offer all of those options because each individual is different and if you can't find the format of the type of meeting that you want that uses video or non-video whatever makes you feel safe because we're trying to create an environment where you're comfortable and you're safe then we'll train you to do it that's why you should hear some of the conversations that me and kelly and jay and steve and you know some of the the kind of founding guys of all this and our friends in australia brett and some other people you know that we have about this we have these hugely fundamental differences on how we feel that our spaces should function. But what that did not stop us from doing was creating our own space the way that it is that you take what you need and you leave the rest. And that is a fundamental, you know, that's what Jimmy says, you know, in, in what can I do in the basic text when he wrote it is what can you do? Well, you build what you need for your personal recovery and then you share it. And so, you know, there will be a huge debate about this and anonymity forever moving forward. And the reality is anything that can happen online can happen in a face-to-face -face meeting. You can be recorded in a face-to-face -face meeting. You can have your picture taken and not know it. All of those things. The reason that we don't talk about that all the time is that we don't want to beat that horse to death and have people start freaking out about <laughs> normal meetings too and realizing, holy shit, somebody could be recording my share from their cell phone. We have experienced that in Kentucky. We've experienced people with agendas recording audio of service meetings and then using it, weaponizing it at a later date. So that just goes to show that uh, if you don't want your shit all over the place, then, then, uh, or the possibility of that, then join or create a space that suits your needs and that makes you feel comfortable. Because I think we all, Kelly, Kelly schooled me on this in depth because of, of his skill set and what he does for work about what the reality is about what our anonymity really is. And Jay is, has also done that because of what he does for a living so i don't want to i don't want to ramble on too much more but so here's what we're going to do we're going to continue to take questions all the way until 10 minutes till then we're going to mute all for the room again and we're and caitlin is going to take control for the car cat workshop but until then we're just going to keep rolling we're going to keep trying to meet needs and answer questions 